All right. Fantastic. And thank you, everyone, for joining us again with the right policy for your real estate investment. This is part four of our series, April is Affiliate Month. We got Ozzy Carranza here with Ozzy Carranza Insurance. Thank you, Ozzy, for joining us today. Thank you, Joey, for having me. Uh, I do appreciate uh, you allowing me to share my knowledge, and, and uh, hopefully uh, everyone here can, can take a few, uh, a few golden nuggets in regards to, to insurance and how to best uh, uh, protect their real estate investment. Uh, but first off, I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, I do want to thank Joey and Jeanette uh, from the Greater Downey Association of Realtors uh, for giving me the opportunity to, to share this information with you. So with that said, uh, let's take it away. Uh, Join the next slide, please. Um, so today I'd like to take some time to discuss the right insurance policy uh, for you or your client, okay? Depending on whether uh, you or your client will be living in the home, renting it out on a yearly lease, flipping it, uh, whether the property will be a vacation home or seasonally rented out, um, your property must have the right insurance policy to make sure that there's no gaps in your coverage. Okay, so I want to start off with uh, you know coverage for your primary residence. Um, so a standard homeowner's insurance policy uh, generally is going to cover uh, it's going to cover things like you know fire, uh, if lightning hits the home, there's an explosion, gets vandalized, uh, something falls on the on the house like a tree, uh, you know uh, an airplane, uh, you know if anything that falls from the sky. Uh, windstorm or hail, uh, if a car crashes into it, and also for sudden accidental uh, water damage. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear me. Uh, let's see. Uh, is it better now? Uh, can uh, Can you guys hear me okay? Somebody yes. Okay. Um, okay, so I guess I'll, I'll repeat the, my last part that uh, generally, a homeowner's insurance policy uh, uh, for a primary residence is going to cover uh, you know, fire, lightning, uh, explosion, vandalism, you know, falling objects, uh, falling tree, an airplane, um, windstorm or hail, a, crash, a car crashes into the home, or sudden and accidental uh, water damage, uh, meaning like a pipe burst. Okay. Um, now you do uh, when. You're either obtaining a policy, help, helping your client obtain a policy, or um, or you know you're looking through your coverage. You wanna you wanna try to find out whether it's an all risk policy or an all peril. Uh, all that means, uh, you know, it's insurance jargon, but all that means is all risk. It's is uh, when you look at an insurance policy, if it says that something is not covered, then that specific uh, that specific thing is not covered. Um, I mean, whatever it doesn't mention. And that would be covered. Um, that's the, the general rule of thumb. And named peril is if it says, okay, uh, your home is covered for you know these five things or seven things, then that's what it, it is specifically covered for. Okay. Now uh, you may have uh, you may have come across something uh, called the replacement cost and or, or and or replacement cost estimator. Uh, this is something that uh, it can be part of a homeowner's insurance policy. Um, uh, lenders do, uh, they do request some of uh, this, they request a cost estimator and basically what that is, is it gives them an, an idea of how uh, the insurance agent or the insurance company came up with the, uh, the main coverage, which is the dwelling coverage. Um, it tells them how much they came up, you know, so you'll see sometimes coverage, you know, say dwelling, 200,000, 300,000, 500,000. So it gives the uh, specifics of you know how that amount uh, uh, came up with, uh, because they want to know that they want to make sure that the home is going to be rebuilt, um, uh, you know, to replace it. You know, they want to make sure if there's wooden floors, you know, you want to know that there's wooden floors. If if there's AC, if it has um, let's say tile roof, um, you know, things like that. Uh, they want to make sure that it's going to it's going to be. Uh, replaced and that replacement cost estimator is typically what your lenders are. Um, it's one of the things that their lenders require when it comes to insurance. Okay. Um, another thing is, is other coverages that are part of a homeowner's insurance policy. Uh, generally, homeowner's insurance policies are, are like package policies, so they come uh, with other coverages like um, loss of home use coverage. Basically, what that does, that loss of home use coverage puts the 
uh, puts uh, you know your clients or, or you know whoever lives in the home puts them in another home while the place is being rebuilt uh, due to something that is covered. So for example, a fire, let's say there's a fire in the home, um, the uh, uh, um, clients don't have anywhere to live, you know, the, uh, they, they will um, go into a, possibly a hotel for a few days until uh, a lease is found. Um, and that's typically, um, you know, how that loss of home uh, use coverage, that's how typically it all, you know, it, it, um, the dollar amount or the, the length of that coverage uh, can be uh, can be you know, that's 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 not so bad. Sorry, guys, uh, we'll not do that bad. Uh, can you guys hear me okay now? Uh, Joey, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you just fine. You can hear me okay. Just speak up just a little bit, and I think you'll be perfect. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, sorry, guys, I didn't know that 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 was that was going to happen, but um. So that's the loss of use, home use coverage. Uh, other coverage that is part of the homeowner's insurance policy is personal property. So everything that is standard uh, to a home generally is covered. So uh, your appliances, your TVs, your beds, your clothes, uh, cell phones, computers, things like that. Um, if it if it gets damaged due to something that is you know um, that is covered, as far as a fire or an explosion, then um, you know uh, your insurance company. Uh, will pay for your personal property uh, it, as long as, again, that coverage is, is there, okay? And then uh, there's liability coverage. Liability is going to pay uh, for somebody, uh, in case somebody gets hurt in your property, uh, you know, and they have medical bills uh, or they try to sue you because they got hurt, uh, that, uh, that liability uh, limit protection will, you know, will, will cover, okay? And so that is pretty standard. Uh, those are pretty standard coverages on a primary residence, okay? Uh, now, uh, you know, you may have clients uh, or yourself that owns rental properties. Um, oh, can you go back to it? Okay, thank you. Uh, that, ha that have rental properties. So you may have a one unit, uh, you know, uh, rental, two units or up to four units. Um, that's still uh, going to be, uh, majority of the time, it's going to be insured uh, with a, a regular, uh, I guess, rental uh, kind of landlord policy. Not, not necessarily like commercial or apartment policy. Uh, that could be, um, I'll talk about that on the next slide, but typically up to four units uh, are, uh, can be covered in a, in a personal lines, um, you know, insurance policy, okay? Uh, the coverage that the units are gonna have uh, are gonna be, uh, you know, similar depending on if you have an all risk policy or versus a main uh, uh, parents policy. So, you know, uh, it'll you know, cover fire, lightning, you know, explosion, or falling tree, things like that. Um, uh, you just want to make sure that you understand and you ask your insurance agent, you know, what is you know what is covered and what, what kind of policy it is. Okay. Uh, one thing that I don't have on here, uh, but that I do see a lot of people question often is um, so. For example, a picture of, of these you know four roofs, they're connected, right? So uh, if you have four units that are connected. Uh, you're, uh, you or your clients are going to have one policy for those four units, okay? Um, so uh, the rule of thumb is if, e if uh, uh, each structure needs to be insured separately. So let's say this was two uh, separate structures, so two units in one structure and two units on another, you would need two policies, okay? So you just want to uh, uh, be aware of that, uh, you know, when, when uh, assisting a client in purchasing their unit, okay? Uh, a, a standard rental uh, property or like a landlord um, uh, policy is also going to cover loss of rents. Those loss of rents are typically going to cover, uh, you know, when there's a fire or when there's something that is covered. So, for example, uh, you know, if there's a fire and explosion and your tenants cannot live there, uh, they're obviously not going to be paying you the rent. So that's where those loss of rents uh, come in. Um, and typically there's a limit or a time frame you do want to ask your insurance company, uh, you know, what that limit or what that time frame is of what is, uh, of how much is, is, is being covered of those loss of rents, okay? You do want to make sure that that, 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 it, that is a part of the policy uh, as it is an important coverage, okay? Uh, next is liability coverage, similar to the homeowner's insurance. If somebody gets hurt on the property uh, and that, uh, that, um, that person, you know, has medical bills, or now they try to sue you because they can't work, um, uh, you know, because they fell on the property. 
so that liability limits will, um, you know, will, will kick in and, and assist you in uh, paying for those medical bills for that lawsuit. Um, there's some, there's an endorsement called personal injury that you uh, want to confirm if your policy has it or you want to confirm that your tenant's policy has it. Uh, what that does is it, it, it'll cover for wrongful eviction. Uh, you know, if the landlord gets sued uh, by the tenant, um, you know, saying that, you know, they have no right to evict them. Um, you know, there's possible coverage there with that uh, personal injury endorsement. Okay. Uh, you know, the rental uh, property coverage will also have, you know, vandalism coverage. So for example, even if your tenant, um, you know, let's say, you know, they're, they're, uh, uh, they're leaving the property, uh, you know, and they just uh, you know, got upset, you know, uh, and, you know, they decided to vandalize the property before they left. Um, you know, that's something that can possibly be covered as well. And then, um, you know, uh, for the tenants, uh, renter's insurance uh, is recommended. And reason being is, you know, one of the questions that I get a lot is, okay, what happens, to, you know, if there's a fire? Uh, what happens to my tenants? Like, you know, am I, you know, do I, um, you know, like, am I responsible for paying their, you know, their, you know, for them to live somewhere else? Am I responsible for their uh, personal belongings? Uh, you know, and, and, you know, technically, um, uh, you, uh, I don't think you, know, you have to provide that for them. Uh, you know, you do want them, you, you do want to make sure that they have renter's insurance coverage so that, uh, if it, uh, Joy, the, the screen went blank. Joey? Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Joey, okay. I'm getting there, it's bad audio. So I apologize for that, everyone. Um, and so, yeah, the renter's insurance is, uh, you know, is important to cover so that they can cover their uh, personal belongings and, um, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and the system would, uh, somewhere to live while the, the place is being rebuilt or help them, uh, you know, live somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide, Joey. I think it's, it's dark. Joey. Joey, I can't see the screen. Uh, Can you see it now? Uh, No, I don't know if everybody can see it. Okay, there you go. Perfect, thank you, John. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna try to talk louder. Hopefully uh, that helps. And if I'm too loud, let me know, Joey. Um, uh, as far as apartment buildings go, uh, if, you do, if you are purchasing an apartment building or if your clients are purchasing an apartment building, Typically, anything that is uh, over five attached units uh, generally are insured under a commercial uh, business insurance policy. So earlier, I mentioned that um, you know if you had uh, four units attached, you could still insure it with a personal line policy. Uh, but once you have five units that are attached, uh, you uh, you do have to obtain a a commercial a commercial or business insurance policy. And um, you know, and then another example is if, if so if you have you know, uh, let's say two units in one structure and three three units on another structure, uh, that would still fall under a personal lines because uh, you know it's it's being insured, uh, you know, per per structure. Um, so as long as you don't have five attached units, um, you know, you can insure with the personal lines. Or if you have five attached units or more, uh, then that's when you need that business insurance policy. Okay. Uh, once you uh, you know have uh, more units. Uh, you do have a higher liability exposure where more people can slip and fall, uh, or if you have, you know, if you have stairs, um, you know, things like that, or a playground, or you know, uh, stuff like that. You do want to make sure that you obtain a minimum of a million dollars in liability coverage in case somebody does get hurt on the property. And then there's also uh, something called an umbrella policy, which is basically just extended liability, uh, and so it allows you to obtain higher liability coverage. And uh, you know, if you have an apartment building, and you know whether you if you own it personally or you own it through a corporation or an LLC, uh, anything that is owned personally or within uh, the LLC uh, generally can can also be have that extended liability coverage. 
uh, within that umbrella policy and, and that extended liability starts at a million dollars a month, okay? Uh, you're also gonna have some loss of rents coverage. You wanna make sure that that is, that that is on there. Uh, you wanna confirm uh, you know, how much is, of that is covered. So if the whole building uh, catches on fire, uh, you know, are you going to be covered for a year, for 24 months? Uh, is there a certain dollar limit that you're going to be covered for? You want to make sure you ask your insurance agent what that is uh, so that you have enough coverage, okay? And once again, renter's insurance is going to be recommended for the tenants so that they have coverage for their personal property and, um, you know, and, and give them access to, to some funds to be able to move uh, or stay somewhere while the apartment unit is, is being uh, rebuilt, okay? Uh, next slide, Joy. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, another, uh, you know, something that I do a lot is, is actually uh, uh, vacant uh, rehab or, or flip properties. Um, uh, you know, so, you know, this is for, for clients or for yourself, if you're, um, you know, buying a home and uh, you know it's gonna be vacant, uh, typically the rule of thumb is, is over 30 days um, and, you know, you're gonna be working on it, um, you know, remodeling it, rehabbing it. Uh, and, you know, and flipping it, you know, a few months later, you want to make sure that you do have uh, the appropriate coverage, okay, because these are considered uh, high risk. Uh, and uh, you're either going to have a vacant rehab policy, or if you're adding, uh, like, square footage to the home, or if you're adding a second floor, you may need a builder's risk policy. You do want to talk to your insurance agent to make sure that you have the appropriate um, you know, the appropriate coverage depending on your project, okay? Uh, vandalism is, 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 a, is, is majority of the time why, why these properties are considered more high risk. Uh, you know, when you uh, have a property that is sitting, you know, waiting to get permits or, you know, doing, you know, the engineering or architectural drawings, uh, you know, there's, there's people constantly looking for these homes to stay in so they'll break in, they'll start cooking in there, um, you know, there's been instances where, where people, you know, will, will live there for, for a few days, uh, if not more, uh, and, you know, they can either trash the place, uh, you know, uh, they, they can use a fire to try to stay warm, uh, ca therefore causing, you know, causing, um, you know, some, some damage to be caused to the, to the property, and that's why they are considered a more high uh, uh, higher risk, okay? Uh, and then you also have, you know, uh, just regular trespassers. Um, you know, I remember as a kid, uh, I think there was a property uh, close to uh, one of my one of my uncle's house, and uh, it was vacant for a while. Um, I think you know it was waiting. There was some damage to it, and you know I don't know, you know why it was vacant for so long. But you know I know as, as kids we go in there and, and play and do all kinds of crazy stuff uh, in there. So. Um, there's that, 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 that people just kind of, you know, there's going to be certain, uh, certain people that just generally want to go in there uh, and can cause, you know, some, some more damage to the property, uh, you know, and therefore, you know, also some liability exposure, uh, you know, people can slip and fall, can hurt themselves, you know, depending on the condition of the home. And, uh, you know, another thing is that, you know, a standard homeowner's insurance policy is typically uh, go, or generally going to exclude or, or even reduce, uh, you know, reduce or exclude coverage uh, on, on these projects. So you never want to, you know, if you know that you're going to flip this property, you don't want to obtain a standard homeowner's insurance policy. You want to make sure you talk to your insurance agent, let them know what you're doing to the property uh, because it is very important. Uh, we talked about uh, the gap, that gap in coverage. You don't want that gap. You don't want, you know, um, uh, you know, you don't want to find out that, you know, the, somebody vandalized the home while the home was vacant and, uh, you know, that there's no coverage. You don't, you don't want that to happen. Um, so you want to make sure you obtain the right coverage for that, uh, for that flip. Okay. Uh, next slide, Joey. Another question that I actually get a lot, especially uh, recently, uh, there is, uh, so, you know, it seems like now, uh, you know, more people are converting their garages into ADUs. And so you do want to talk to your insurance agent, uh, you know, and, and things that you want to consider when insuring, uh, you know, uh, the, your ADU. Uh, so first you want to, uh, you do want to find out if that ADU is attached to the, the client's uh, primary residence. Um, if it is attached to the client's uh, primary residence, you may be able to, uh, your client or yourself, you may be able to keep the same 
policy. You just need to increase the coverage to include that ADU, okay? Mm -hmm. And if the ADU is detached from the main home, uh, you will generally need a separate uh, new policy to ensure that you structure because now you know you'll have a primary residence and then another structure. So each structure, as I mentioned before, does need to be insured separately. Okay, next slide, then. And then, um, so next you have uh, vacation and short-term rentals. Starting to see these uh, more and more. So uh, you know, if you, you know, people. Uh, or your, your clients, you know, are buying homes in, you know, in Big Bear, Lake Arrowhead, or a lot of these vacation spots. And typically what they do is, you know, they're going to use it as a vacation home for, you know, for some weekends. Uh, and then they may be renting it out uh, uh, through Airbnb or other, you know, or other uh, channels that are similar, uh, you know, for the weekend, for the week, things like that. Um, so you do want to make sure that if that is your goal, you want to make sure that you let your insurance agent know that it is going to be a vacation short or short term rental. Um, uh, because you do want to make sure that you have, you know, you have the right coverage and that there's, you know, again, no gap in your insurance policy, because generally a, a, a standard homeowners insurance policy, again, uh, is probably not going to cover, uh, um, you know, if, if you're constantly renting it out. Uh, through, through Airbnb, okay? Uh, now, another thing is that a lot of these homes, a lot of these vacation homes uh, are now uh, considered to be in high fire areas. For example, you know, places like Big Bear or where there's a lot of trees all over the place, um, you know, with the, with the uh, wildfires in California over the last few years, uh, there's a lot of areas now that, um, you know, are considered to be high fire. And uh, so what you're gonna see is you're gonna see insurance companies maybe not wanting, you know, to insure homes in that area. Um, and so there are going to be uh, some insurance companies that will, that will insure the home, but they will only insure just, you know, for example, for like fire or just, just certain coverages. It's, it's, it's going to be certain coverages, not just fire. There's several other coverages, but uh, there's going to be one, one company that will insure like a limited amount. And then if the client wants like a full kind of policy where it has like liability, uh, 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 you know, uh, coverage for like maybe personal belongings, things like that. Um, you, you obtain something called the difference in condition policy to kind of make it a, a, a complete package policy. Okay, um, that is something that you uh, your your um, insurance agent will talk to you about if when they're running the quote um, and it comes up to be in a high fire area. Uh, that's where you will see that difference in condition policy. Uh, you know, if you're selling homes or, or you know, um, your clients are buying homes in in uh, you know, Big Bear or Lake Arrowhead or places like that, uh, you will probably see this uh, see this more often. Okay, and that is that is oh man, my PowerPoint presentation just did not uh, uh, it, it didn't come out. It didn't look like that when I forwarded it to Joey. I noticed there was a few things that uh, there was a few things that kind of got a little thrown off. So I apologize for that, everyone. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so, you know, I'm Ozzy Carranza, you know, from the Ozzy Carranza Insurance Agency. Uh, you know, there's my phone number, uh, my office, my cell, my email. Uh, you can also, also follow me at uh, uh, Carranza Agency uh, through Facebook or Ozzy Insurance Group on Instagram. I do want to apologize for the, the, just, you know, the bad audio and the presentation was a little, a little off. So I'm hoping that you guys were able to hear uh, and found some value out of this. You know, if you do, if you do need any type of, you know, advice or um, just kind of guidance, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to, to answer any questions, any concerns, run any scenarios by me. I'm more than happy to assist with that. Uh, I do want to thank everybody for being on. And, and uh, Joey, I don't know if you, there's some questions on there uh, or if you want to open it up for questions. Uh, you're, you're on mute, Joey. So if there are any questions, please feel free to use that chat bar or to use the Q&A. 
once again, I appreciate you, Ozzy, coming on and doing this presentation for us. This is going to be very beneficial for our realtors, and especially for our new members. Guys, I want to thank everyone for joining us today for the fourth installment of our April is Affiliate series. We got one more class coming up tomorrow to end this month. Once again, thank you, Ozzy. I appreciate you. Everyone, have a greater DAOR day. Thank you, John. Thanks, everyone.